Now to your community focus. Today we're being joined by East Providence Mayor Bob De Silva live via Zoom. Mayor, thanks for joining us today. My pleasure. Thank you for the invite. Mayor, we've heard the health department say that they're looking to open more vaccination sites, including one in East Providence. So what is the potential location for that site and how soon might it open? So we've been working with the uh, Department of Health and our fire department EMA personnel. We're looking to uh, open uh, or start doing a regional pod, I believe, uh, the, the first week of April, and then we'll be moving into a much larger facility over at the uh, Shores Plaza, which is across from um, the former Shores Market that's across from the uh, East Providence High School. Uh, so that, that'll be the, uh, the location. I want to talk to you, Mayor, also about something that our colleague Ted Nisi reported on yesterday about just how much money the state and some cities are set to get from the American Rescue Plan. East Providence is one of six cities set to get the most money, roughly $19 million coming your way. So how do you plan to use all of that cash? That's a great question because we're, we're waiting on uh, guidance from the uh, federal treasury on what it can and can't be used. We know that initially we're being told it can be used for infrastructure, it can be used for uh, you know, uh, some projects, but not for other things. So we're hoping that we're able to uh, use it in a way that has long-term benefit for our community. I mean, we have some major infrastructure projects that need to be looked at. Uh, you know, we got this seawall that's in, on the verge of collapsing over at Rosa Larissa Park, which is something that's gonna uh, end up being costly. If we can put some of that money towards infrastructure projects and offset that, having go to the taxpayer for that, that'd be fantastic. Mayor, let's talk a little bit about the new high school. You drive past, it's impressive, you can't miss it. It's an up to $189 million project built primarily during a global pandemic. How's the timeline look and any changes that have come up in your plans considering what we did learn about the last year about student needs, access, spacing, any of those plans have to change? I, I feel fully confident that with the effort that's going on that Governor Dan McKee is leading and getting vaccine out to everyone that we'll be able to resume school in the fall 100 percent like we used to back in the day before this pandemic uh the timeline for the uh, school construction completion is on on mark uh they've done an incredible job dealing with anything that uh may have slowed them down with the pandemic they had they took uh, special precautions and procedures to ensure that the the staff and the personnel working on the building uh were safe and uh we're actually i think ahead of schedule from the last time i i heard from the uh, building committee and so, Mayor, just remind us again, when is that high school set to be in use? We're hoping next fall uh, of this year. So Great. in the fall of this year, we should have students back into the building. We're very excited about that. That's fantastic news. Um, the city is taking some steps to crack down on residents who mix their trash and their recycling. So how big of a problem is this for the city? And what do residents need to know in order to avoid facing a fine? Well. I'm glad we brought that up. It, it's been an issue. Uh, last year, $29,000 in, in, uh, in fines and fees that we had to pay as a municipality, which ends up costing all of our taxpayers. So we just ask people to uh, follow the rules. Be careful on what you put into the recycling bin. Don't put anything in plastic bags. Uh, we have it all over our, our uh, website, eastprovincery.gov. It's easy to find the information. We're going to be educating people. We've been trying to educate people by sending stuff in our uh, mailers and, and the water bill and, and posting stuff as much as we can. But we ask for people's cooperation to ensure that we're not contaminating the load. Because what happens is an entire truckload of recyclable material may get deemed contaminated and, and rejected. And all the hard work of all the people in the community that went into putting uh, their, their recyclables in the recycling bin gets put into their general uh, landfill. And that, that's not good. And Mayor, we have just about 30 seconds. I wanted to ask about the fact that EP was chosen to participate in the Rhode Island Infrastructure Bank's 2021 Resilient Rhode Municipal Resilience Program. A mouthful, but basically the city is getting some support to work on some projects related to climate change. What is East Providence planning to focus on? Well, we've got we've got an incredible amount of uh, oceanfront. You know, our waterfront is is uh, an untapped potential, but we need to protect that. And we're seeing it firsthand for, I know that you happen to be a, an East Providence resident. If you ever have a chance, take a ride, uh, take a ride down or walk down to uh, Rose Larissa Park. And it's a beautiful park with a beautiful, a beautiful access to the beach there, Crescent Beach. And um, the, the sea wall is on the verge of collapse. And that certainly has to do with climate change, in my opinion. Uh, so 
whatever we could do to mitigate that. We've also got other areas along the waterfront that is starting to see some some uh, some serious uh, ramifications from constant bombardment by uh, rising uh, waters and, and the weather changes. East Providence Mayor Bob De Silva, it's true. I am a townie now. Thank you so much for <laughs> taking the time. Thank you. Take care, guys.